Well, once again, we are so thankful for your service and what you have given to this country and uh, our freedom. And so that has sparked my message today is on freedom. And uh, today we find and see and know that our freedom is found in Christ. No matter the situation, no matter what chaos is around, no matter the confusion, no matter what is going around, we have freedom in Christ. And uh, today I want us to, to look at that and to place that into our lives. So I'm going to be reading out of the Phillips and the NIV and the New King James today. So if you'd like to, you can follow along on the app. So uh, you can open up your phones, you can follow along on the app and uh, watch and be a part and fill in the blank on the messages. But open up your Bibles to John chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. John chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. Jesus speaks of personal freedom. So Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, If you are faithful to what, I have to what I have said, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But you are descendants of Abraham, they replied. But we are descendants of Abraham, they replied. And we uh, have never in our lives been any man's slaves. So how can you say to us, you will be set free? Jesus returned. Believe me when I tell you that every man who commits a sin is a slave. For a slave is no permanent part of a household, but a son is. If the son then sets you free, you are really free. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for this time that we have to come together to take the word of God and to place it into our lives. Challenge us today to receive it and to place it into our lives, we pray. Amen. I have talked with many people who have uh, been in prison or been in jail, and we've had conversations like, what, what, what do you think about when you're sitting in a jail cell all day long? And it's funny, most of them will say, the thing we're thinking about is freedom. We want out, and uh, we want to be free. And, and people who are enslaved by sin, the challenges for us today is the desire to have freedom from that sin. They want to be free from the, the things that, that destroy our lives and the misery that we sometimes have walked into. Jesus tells us of a way to have that freedom. The way to have that freedom and to place freedom into our lives is to know the truth. Jesus is the truth. You see, the way that we find ourselves to walk into freedom is to know the truth and to hold on to the truth and what we place into our lives. And today, I, I'm, I forgot my Bible, so I'm going to go down here and grab my Bible. The thing that we have in our own personal lives that we must know and place and stand on is we have to have a, a base of truth. We have to know where truth is. And I'm telling you, I have read many books, as you have. I, I've seen and, and gone through theology classes. I have debated uh, topics. Uh, one part of my life, I thought it was this way. Then another part of my life, I, I changed my mind. And so I thought of it this way. And uh, you have, there's a million topics of things of study and, and, and scripture and, and things that I have placed into my life. And I've been uh, influenced by people. I have been influenced by people people and philosophers and books and studying. But the thing I always have to come back to is the word of God. I must place this as the ultimate truth in my life. No matter what, no matter the situation, no matter the storm, no matter how upset that I am that this says don't do it that way. <laughs> and I want to do it my way because I like to do it my way because I like it that way. I must hold to this. To truly be free from enslavement of any sin or of any situation, to truly be free, I must have a foundation of truth. I must know the truth because it is the truth that sets you free. It's the truth that sets you free. And the problem I think that we run into so many times is we don't hold on to that or we don't place that in our lives. And so we run and we run into confusion. 
We run into mysteries. We run into uh, uh, ideas. We run into things that distract us from the truth. So when we find that, we must have that base level of understanding that the word of God is the truth. And John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says this, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You see, so many times we are taught, and today we see this, we are taught that truth is an abstract conception. We see that the truth, a lot of people want to determine the truth to what they hold to is the truth. They want to say two plus two equals five because I just wanted to. So now that's the new truth. And they will hold to that. Society will push to that. They will come to their own truth by rationalizing the way they want to. And they'll say this is the truth. And if we don't know the truth, if we don't know the word of God, we have nothing to stand on and we find ourselves in an abstract concept of understanding this is the truth when it's not. The Bible is very clear. The Bible is very clear. Jesus said it in his own words. I am the way the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. So when we start talking about salvation, we start talking about eternity, we start talking about the blessed hope in our lives, the thing that we placed into our lives and hold into our lives is that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And we find that the truth in Jesus frees us from the consequences of sin and from self-deception and from deception by others and especially by the work of Satan. You see, the truth in Jesus shows us the way to eternal life with God. The truth in Jesus will indeed set us free, free from sin's death and sin's penalty, from the corrosion and the corrosive effects of sin in our lives. And from the curse that all of us have because of Adam's original sin, the fall of man. You see, we must grab independence because Independence Day is here. We're going to celebrate this this week. Independence is here. Independence is setting us free because in Jesus we are free. Amen? (coughs) That's not Corona. You see, we are free because of what Jesus has done. We are free because of the truth that is in Jesus. We have freedom from sin. We have freedom from the consequences of sin in our lives. We have the freedom when we take and know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. In John chapter 8, verse 31, it says, Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, if you are faithful to what I have said, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. So let's look at this. I love the first part of this. If you are. Look at this. If you are. You know what that is? A choice. It's a choice. If every day we make choices. And sometimes in our life, it seems like constantly every other moment we're making a choice. And when we're in the midst of conflict, we are constantly making choices and we don't like making choices. And we're like, get slow down life. (laughs) I'm tired of making choices. I'm just going to go out and get on the tractor and be out there. Don't call me. (laughs) The choice I want to, you see this? Every day, all the time, we make choices. And this starts out with this. If you are, you have a choice. If you are faithful 
What does this mean? Faithful. If you choose to be faithful, if this is your choice to walk in this truth, if this is your choice to walk and to own this freedom, if you choose to be faithful, what does faithful mean? It means to abide. It means to continue to learn. It, it continue to apply it in your life day in and day out to live by it. It is not something that you walk into day in and day out. It is something that you live day in and day out. It's a lifestyle. This is who you are. I abide to this. If I choose, I choose to make this my life. Because I know this, the truth I know the truth, and the truth sets me free. You see, if you are, you choose to be faithful, what does it say? You will know the truth. In order to know something, you must get it. For me to know something, I got to get it in my brain and get it, get it. I got to observe it. I got to think about it. I got to read about it. I got to meditate on it. I, I, I have to I study about it. I have to get it into to my spirit. I have to get it into my character. I have to get into my conduct, my conduct of what I do, my emotions for a positive effect. You see, this is the battle that we have. We know the truth, and so many times it, 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 we, we conflict, and, and it, like, it becomes a paradox, and we struggle at times. Sometimes we say things we shouldn't have said. Sometimes we do things we shouldn't have done. What do we do? We ask for forgiveness, and we move forward. And we try not to do it again. We be, think, we, we be thoughtful. We think about it. We meditate on it. It's a lifestyle. Do we have all the answers all the time? Yeah, they're usually wrong. <laughs> you see, you will know the truth. And sometimes we have to walk through things that are difficult. And when we walk through them, what do we do? We learn. We must learn. We must place it into our lives and learn. Reminds me, I had a dog that loved to kill chickens. And so we had chickens. And I read a couple stories, you know, you, you take the dead chicken and you spank the dog with the dead chicken and then they'll leave him alone. That didn't work. So then I read something else. They said, tie the dead chicken around the dog's neck like a collar. And let, let the dog carry it around for a while. And he'll hate chickens and he won't do it again. That didn't work. So through trial and trial and error, my dog would not learn. So what did I learn? I'm not going to have chickens as long as I have this dog. You see, we must learn when we walk into conflict, when we walk into things that are disturbing to us, when we walk in, when we do something wrong, when, when, when we mess up, we must learn. See, this is what it's talking about. The truth sets you free. If you walk up to the stove and you put your hand on it and you burn your hand, you're like, oh, that really hurts. The next day you come over and you use your other hand because you're not sure this hand hurt once. So maybe this one, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to, and then you, if you don't learn, you cause constant pain. And pretty soon you walk in constant pain, and then you become an offended person and a bitter person. You see, when you don't know the truth or you won't learn from the truth, I promise you this. I promise you frustration. I promise you conflict. And I promise you inside the depths of who you are, you will become bitter, and you will express that with your life. It will be in your character. It will be in your lifestyle. It will be who you are. You will walk around offended. You will walk around bitter and you don't care about them touching the stove. I touched it so you need to get some burn. Why don't you touch the stove? The new truth is you have to touch the stove. And people who don't know the truth will walk in that footsteps. One of the things I think that is most contagious, 
most contagious amongst people is the spirit of offense. If you don't believe me, turn your TV on right now. <laughs> Just turn it on. It's <laughs> We're going to move on. <laughs> we must know the truth. You see, we choose to abide by it in our life, and when we do that, we will know the truth. And when we know the truth, we live by that truth with our character, with our conduct, with our emotions, with our spirit. We live by that truth. And you know what that does? It gives you freedom. Freedom. Because when you make a mistake, you know, I'm forgiven. I'm going to ask for forgiveness. And I'm going to move on. And I'm going to try my hardest not to do it again. It's a choice. This is the freedom that Christ is giving to us. Knowledge of the word doesn't, doesn't happen by accident. Knowledge of this freedom doesn't happen by accident. Knowledge comes because you have put yourself into it. You have planned. You have studied. You have placed it into your life. It's not like when I was in college. I used to take my book and I'd put it underneath my pillow and I'd fall asleep and I'd wake up the next morning and I'd know the whole book. No. You must study. You must discipline yourself. I'm telling you, when you choose to abide and you want this in your character, you want this in your conduct, you want this in your spirit, you must discipline yourselves to choose to do what is right, to hold to the truth, and to place it into your life. No matter what's going on around you. And what happens the next thing it says is, the truth will make you free. The truth will make you free. When we know the truth, the truth liberates us. It liberates us. It sets us free. Truth begins to work in our lives. It's, it's setting us free when, when, when the things that we place into our lives, it sets us free. It gets us out. Truth goes to, to work into our lives. It's, it's breaking chains of sin. It's breaking curses. It's breaking habits. It's breaking deceptions. Truth sets us free. When we read and study the truth, when we meditate on it, when we know and place God's word into our life, I'm telling you this, this is the answer. When this gets into our minds, when this gets into our hearts, when this gets into who we are, it changes us and it gives us freedom. It gives us freedom. And if you sit in the midst of confusion and you sit in the midst of, uh, of being offended or you sit in the midst of being bitter today, I'm telling you this, you don't know the freedom that this gives. You have to place it into your heart, into your spirit, and into your mind. One of the toughest battles, I got this book, it's called um, The Battlefield of the Mind. It talks about that. The battle is in the mind is to take this word and to flush my mind, not to try to erase all my thoughts, because I can't erase my thoughts, because I'm constantly thinking, and it drives me crazy. But what do I have to do? I have to discipline myself and say, I'm going to think upon the truth, not upon my offense. Because when I think upon my offense, it drives me crazy. I begin to worry. I begin to fret. I begin to make up stories in my mind. <laughs> oh, they said this. They meant that. They're going to do this. This is going to happen. The sky's going to fall. And it's going to... And my mind goes crazy. If we don't discipline our mind in the truth, if we don't flush and put this truth into our mind and into our spirit, we will constantly find ourselves in conflict. The truth sets you free. I challenge you, especially I challenge you, if you talk about things that, and you're bitter about things that happened in years past, I'm telling you this, flush your mind with the word of God. Don't think upon the things that make you bitter. Don't think upon the things of people who have hurt you in the past. 
People have made horrible choices and it has horribly affected us. It has horribly been placed into your life. It's not right. It's wrong. But I'm telling you this, it doesn't have to destroy you the rest of your life. You don't have to hold a bitterness. You don't have to hold an offense. You can place into your life the freedom. The freedom you can choose. You can choose to abide in the freedom because the truth sets you free. The spirit of being offended, the, the, the spirit of, of, of bitterness within your life. You do not have to live that way. I promise you this, there's freedom. There's freedom when you know Christ. And that freedom sets you apart from bitterness. It sets you apart from being offended. It sets you apart from ugliness in your life. It sets you to be free. We must know the word and place it into our lives. The truth sets us free. And the truth is in Jesus. We are free from the consequences of sin. Generational curses passed down from Adam, the original fall of man, by the power of truth, by the power of knowing who Jesus is and what he has done for you. Look at the next, next verse, verse 33. What they do? <clears throat> they replied, what is our answer concerning his freedom? Is it full of pride and arrogance? They said this. Well, we were never in bondage. So how can you set us free? Is our answer to Christ? Is our answer to this knowledge? Is our answer to this truth? Pride? You know what they did to me? I'll tell you what they did to me. They hurt me deep. And I'm going to hold on to it till the day I die. I'm going to be, are you full of pride and bitterness? How are you responding to the truth? How are you going to respond to this freedom? I'm telling you about the freedom. The question is, they responded like, hey, well, I've never been in bondage. So I can't be in bondage. You can't set me free. What is our response to this truth? Oh, I'm going to hold on to this little, this little pain because I like to think about this little pain and when I get a little selfish and I get thinking about me, I pull out this little pain and I read it over and I talk about it and I'm offended about it and then I go to sleep and I wake up in the morning with diarrhea. I mean, it's just like, that's what I'm thinking about. It's making me worry. How do you reply? Are we humble? Are we willing? I think so many times when we find ourselves in conflict or we do something wrong, one of the worst things we want to do is apologize. We don't want to apologize. I stabbed you with that knife because I wanted to. I'm not going to say I'm sorry. We get selfish. We get full of pride. When he's telling us the truth sets us free and when we are humble, we receive that truth. We receive that freedom. If we find ourselves in bondage, especially in, 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 in the spirit of, uh, of bitterness, and we find ourselves being offended, this sets us free. This sets you free from bondage. Know the truth. Come to it humbly, willing to learn, willing to grow, willing to place it, and willing to change my life. Because this we know in the next verse. Whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. Sin is a slave master. Because we know the scripture is very, very clear. All have sinned. Except Pastor Russ. No, it doesn't say that in there. Does it, Dave? It doesn't say that. All have sinned. Sin. All. The Bible is clear. Those who fall into sin, sin is your slave master. 
It's your slave master. I don't care who you are, what you think, how bitter you are, or how offended you are at that statement. It doesn't matter. The day is one day every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess. I don't care what you think. It's going to happen. One day, you're going to walk into eternity. I promise you. You're going to walk into eternity. And when you walk into eternity, you will give an account. I don't care you say, I'm so bitter and I'm so offended at that because I'm not ever going to give myself an account. I'm telling you this. The truth is there. You will. You will give an account. Sin is a slave master. But you see, Jesus came into our lives. And because of him today, when we ask Jesus to come into our lives, we are forgiven. And with that forgiveness comes the freedom of sin. Freedom. We're celebrating freedom this week. We're going to be lighting things and blowing them up in the sky. It's going to be so much fun. I'm excited because actually we're going to be taking a little bit of vacation and we're going to Montana where it's called the war zone. Where there's so many fireworks going on, you don't know where to look because they're everywhere. And we're going to go to the war zone on Saturday. It's going to be fun. We're going to celebrate this independence. We're going to celebrate this freedom. And I'm challenging you today to think about your freedom, your freedom from sin, your freedom from the slave master. Because everybody who has sinned, sin is a slave master unless you have placed Jesus Christ into your life. You see, then what does he do? The next verse and and continuing on, he says, you're called a son. You see, Jesus offers us sonship. Forgiveness of sin, adoption into the family of God, a a, a place of his house. He tells us we will be with him forever. A son, a son abides in the house forever. When we become his sons and daughters through faith in Jesus Christ, because of what Jesus has done, we are no longer slaves to sin. We're no longer slaves to sin. Sin is not our slave master. I have freedom. I have forgiveness. And I place that into my lives. Look at 1 John, or John chapter, uh, John chapter 1, verses 10 through 13. In the New King James, it says this. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of the man, but of God. Therefore, If the Son sets you free, you are free. Being the Son of God, Jesus is the authority over sin. He is the authority over death, hell, and the grave, the curse and its consequences. He is the conqueror. We have a blessed hope because of what Jesus has done. He gave his life. He died on a cross and he conquered death, hell, and the grave. He is the one who can break us from the sin in our lives. Only him. There's no other way. He gives the power to us. You see, he gives us this power Those who believe in him, who follow him, who apply the word, who abide in this and desire this, will see and know the freedom. You see in John chapter 8, verse 32, when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. And this is where we must see and know that the Bible is very clear. 
that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved because God sent his one and only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible's clear. Today, we talk about and celebrate the freedom. We honor those, the veterans who have really, in our past of our uh, country, today we sit here in a house of worship together because of what has been sacrificed and what has been given from us in our history. Today, we celebrate freedom. On Saturday, we're all going to be up watching things and blowing things up. It's just going to be, we celebrate the freedom. And today, I'm asking you, are you able to celebrate the freedom of Christ in your life? Maybe you're here in this auditorium or you're at home and you're watching this or on your phone. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up. Maybe you're watching this. You're thinking about this. I'm asking you today. Are you, are you found, have you found yourself? Are you a slave to sin? Are you full of bitterness? Are, are, are you offended? I'm going to ask you this today. Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? The Bible is simple and it's clear. It's not simple. It's clear. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you are forgiven. You are. I'm going to ask everybody in this place to stand with me this morning. And I'm just going to ask you to give me, give me 60 seconds. Those of you at home or online or in this place right now, I'm going to ask you just to, to bow your heads and to give me 60 seconds and just ask yourself the question, where do you and Jesus stand right now? Where do you and Jesus stand? Ask yourself that question. Maybe you're here at home and right now you're asking yourself that question, where do I and Jesus stand? If I was to walk into eternity right now, would I spend it with Jesus? And you struggle answering that because you know you have sin in your life and you know you need to ask Christ to forgive you of that sin. Here at KCA, we're family. We will all pray this prayer together, encouraging each other in our faith. But maybe you're right now, you're thinking about this and you're placing this in your life. You're saying, Pastor Russ, <clears throat> right now, this morning, I need to pray a prayer of salvation. I need to call upon Jesus to know this freedom. I need to ask Christ to forgive me. And if that's you, if you're here in this place or at home right now, I'm going to ask you just to raise your hand. Say, that's me, Pastor Russ. Yeah, absolutely. 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 I need to know Jesus. Here at KCA, as I said, we are family. So I'm going to ask everybody in this place this morning to pray this prayer with me this morning. Let's repeat this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, today I ask that you come into my life and forgive me. Forgive me of the sin that is in my life. And today I know that I am free. I am forgiven because of what you have done for me. Thank you, Jesus for coming into my life.